in three actually there's no countdown i don't know how to tell when we're live or not i think it's now now sounds good it sounds hey, everybody good. <laughs> Don't forget to hit the record button. It always gets me. I got it this time, though. I saw. <laughs> hey, everybody. Welcome to Monday Night Bitch Session with MASL on the Box. <laughs> yeah, good a- Good afternoon. Evening? Night? Evening, yeah. good night. It's. I mean, it's afternoon somewhere. It's probably morning somewhere, too. This is true. This is true. I don't know if we have any morning viewers on our show. I don't think we're there yet. I don't think we're there yet. No, give another. No, yeah, I don't think we're there yet. <laughs> we'll leave it at that. Let's, let's just leave it at that. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, kicking off the night, we have our friend Casey Gasson, and I remember they talked about his pronunciation of his last name because it looks like a really cool French name, but it's not. So, uh, why don't you send so him the link? And have him join whenever he's joining. Yeah, I sent them out the link already. But yeah, um, yeah. before we get started, a little nugget to drop. Uh, I have some M3 news that they're going to do a Great Lakes Invitational announcement soon. That will be hosted by the Great Lake Wanderers. So our good friend Pedro, he's putting together everything. So we're going to we're gonna get to hear and see some M3 Great Lakes stuff. Nice. The teams haven't been announced anything, but it, the announcement will come first and it'll be followed by the, who's going to be participating. From what I heard, the teams that are going to be invited, it's going to be a good, it's going to be a good series, but we got to see, wait for everything to be confirmed. It'll be cool. So with more M3 news, did you see the game? Do you see the clip from the game the other night? <sighs> yes, I did. <laughs> The comments had me dying. Oh, I didn't said see that, the comments. I just saw the video. That bucket is just for for decoration. <laughs> so apparently there was a uh, ceiling issue and just water pouring in, or a pipe issue in the. Uh, where was that? Was that in? It was in Missouri. So it was. It was in. It was in Missouri. It was at the um, uh, the demise Springfield uh, home. And what happened was. When the ball got hit, the problem was is that they don't have nets to stop the balls from going too high. Oh. So it went all the way up and popped the sprinkler. That's awesome. So That's what you awesome. saw was the sprinkler just – and, you know, they, they don't have that system where if one goes off, they all go off. It's just that section went off, and it, just, it was so bad. There was – um, at an at a earlier point in my life, a, a potential friend at the, at the time – he said he was going to mess with the sprinkler system. They're not. There's not a lot of resistance there, because they're meant to basically burn away at the at the first mm-hmm. first flame. So it's like your thinnest of thinnest, like it, not even metal. It's almost like a cardboard thing. And, yeah. Uh, may have. So in my old home, I used to have a sprinkler system, and um, anytime like the boys would come over and we're playing like beer pong or something, I'm like, guys keep the bounce super low because <laughs> you hit that my sprinkler system was the type that if it went off the, the whole floor went off not all three floors but just the whole floor so if my sprinkler went off it was just that whole floor was going to be done and um you know i obviously had the basement too so it would pour into the basement as well i'm like please um, no one hit the sprinkler so to see that happen at the m3 game hilarious so to talk a little bit more about that the game is to be determined what the official results going to go down as but at the time that that happened it was like three minutes left in the third quarter and it was five three uh springfield demise leading so if they're like hey we can't finish it springfield stays undefeated and omaha kings officially take uh their first loss first loss yeah yeah. So what if, um, I mean, it's a superstructure violation, obviously, but don't you get extra points for, for setting the sprinkler system off in your arena? Does that work? You get 10 points. And it is a tie at that point. I mean, you might want to. <laughs> I 
<laughs> it was hilarious. I, we have the clip, but I don't know if we're allowed to use it. Yeah. I'm, we're going to find out. If, if we're allowed to use it next show, we will show the fans this hilarious clip. Yes. Hey, everyone in the chat. Um, oh, yeah. Uh, Matt wants me to do that clip and add the Benny Hill theme music to it. Yes, I can, I can, I, I can find a way to do that. Um, so I worked at a, at a place uh, about a decade ago, actually probably a little more. Anyone in Milwaukee that's seen the big giant clock tower knows where I'm, where I'm talking about. And we went exploring one day and we found our way into the clock tower area, which is, you know, it was, I don't know, I think 11 stories. And then there was like spiral staircase. You had to walk up in complete pitch black, like the old wrought iron spiral staircases right. where you could see all the way down. And it was just like this, it was kind of freaky. We get up there and we get into the room where they have the pooled water for the sprinkler system. It was the, so figure a cement wall three or four feet high, probably four feet high mm -hmm. and maybe 50 feet across. It was this giant pool. And then think of water that hasn't been circulated in like 50 years. Ugh. There was like a layer of like, like gunk, like al it wasn't even algae. It was like just gunk. I mean, one of the guys took a coin, he threw it and went and it just stuck in there. He was, th he was thinking it would skip. So the joke was, if there's a fire, you jump in the fire to avoid getting hit by the water that comes down through the sprinkler <laughs> system. <laughs> yeah, that was uh, that was interesting. That was interesting for sure. I'm like, yeah, I don't, I don't okay, I don't want to be here anymore. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't either. <laughs> yeah. No well, while we're waiting on Casey, uh, also to to summarize the sec other game of the M3, uh, the Sunflowers played uh, Wichita two, and that was. Um, that was an interesting game. It was definitely an interesting game. I, I could tell Wichita has a lot of young players mm -hmm. for their second team that lack a lot of experience because it was just really slow on their part. I mean, the energy was high. It was, you know, everyone's bodies on sacrifice for the defensive side too, just like, you know, how they were playing in that Central Cup. Mm -hmm. But it just was a different story. I, we, Sunflowers, they were they they look like a good team. I, I mean, obviously they had some injury issues when they had played Omaha, but they look like a good team. This mm. really good. They ended up winning the game. Official score. I know there was like a little mix up in the the game with the the board, but the official score was marked down as four uh, six to four. So it was a good game. Good Isn't game, their but... goalkeeper like 16 years old or 17 years old or something? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, but those guys have been playing together for quite some time. Oh, sure. Sure. So they have like a lot of chemistry. A fun fact, you actually learn about this on a project I'm working about, but their original name is gold. It's called queso blanco, which means white cheese in Spanish. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> It's hilarious, but I, I love that name. But unfortunately, for certain reasons, they didn't go with that. So it's pretty cool. I could see why. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, they use it on, like, non-official tournaments and just, like, local leagues. But Hey, let me reach out to Casey, see what's going on. Does Casey on. know what time zone we're in? I sent him the link. I don't Do know. Do I know what time zone we're in? It's been a weird start of the 2021. Last week was weird. Like on Friday, I was like, okay, we're getting the week started. And everyone's like, oh, have a good weekend. I'm like, wait, what? What's going on here? <laughs> Oops, I don't have my ring. You didn't hear that. What? Nothing. My hand feels a little light today. I'm going to get in trouble. How's your knee doing? Hmm? How's your knee doing? Oh, so um, I'm walking. <laughs> <laughs> like without crutches or anything i could bend my knee it's it's a super painful to do the exercises but i'm able to walk so it's positive well, that's good i started i can now use my knee to go up the stairs just not down the stairs oh well, yeah i could see that so I, that's the exercises i started this past week 
is they told me to use my knee going up the stairs, bending it and all that, but not down the stairs yet. That's the next step, which I think will be tomorrow. But we'll see. Or until you can't take it anymore. <laughs> so I have a bunch of topics here, but I don't want to get into it until we're done with Casey and, and until Matt gets here. Oh, Matt's, uh, Matt has a, a f- another food related story where the delivery driver delivered to the wrong meal or wrong place or the wrong time or the wrong something. Wrong like order? That. Wrong order. I think wrong order. Was like was. Everything was wrong. <laughs> yes, everything was wrong. And there was no way to fix it without it being more wrong. I mean, so, so he'll be here shortly. This, still on topic for this show. If you want to be, if you really want to talk about it. <laughs> yeah. So, well, I mean, if you want to get into it while we wait for him on something else, like we could talk about Dallas and, and St. Louis or sorry. Yeah. Dallas and St. Louis. Because yeah, I, I feel like that, that that's, that's a short conversation. Yeah, it really is. Um, so, without going into specifics, there were two games that were on this side of the spectrum and that side of the spectrum of talent level. And one was Friday night and one was Saturday night. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it was – it was the, – the Friday night game was – playoff caliber indoor soccer for for the most part there was some there were some defensive issues kind of on both sides for further in some slip ups and everything but that saturday game was just slop after slop after slop and yeah I, yeah that was that was uh, I don't think we can get it. so dallas dallas and st louis it's it's kind of so St. Louis obviously won their first game of the season, six to five. In total, there was about 59 shots taken from both teams combined. And 11 on target? And 11 on, 11 on target. That I mean, obviously is, more than that, but still. Well, I mean, 11 that made it in the, in the goal. I mean, I didn't see too many saves. I mean, Juan had, what, 10 saves, really good saves. Well, not even really good. There were some that were pretty simple, but there was like three or four that were like, holy crap, Juan, way to put yeah. on. And I, I, he had a better game this game. Like he definitely shut me up from what I said last week where I said you I wouldn't heard, feel you comfortable. Probably heard you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't be surprised. But really, but really he had a better game. But just their defense, Dallas's defense, St. Louis's defense, they're both of their shootings. It was just bad, man. There was some. It, it it seems like the goals shrunk. And for whoever that guy is out there who said we need to make the goals smaller so there's more scoring, no, you're you're wrong. <laughs> I have 59 shots to prove it. <laughs> That's insane. I mean, Max and I. I swear to God, Max just needs to take shots, man. He had four assists that game. I'd rather him have four goals. Yeah. But well, he's the caliber player that he could get four assists and four goals in a game. Well, right, of course. But I'm yeah. saying if I had to trade one for the other, I'd rather him have four goals. Yeah. I mean, the 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 season if we if we took a look at the, the Milwaukee Stars, right? And we look at Max and we look at Ian, it's like night and day their season. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. It's uh, I and think, they're both top players, right? It, and it proves it kind of proves a couple of things to me. It proves that one player does not make a team. So if you have a team that's kind of struggling in certain areas, and you add one player to it, it's not going to magically fix it. But on the same side of the coin, if you take a player that's really really good and put him on a team that's really really good, the, the player is still going to be really really good. Mm-hmm. And that, and Ian, and I don't, I, like, I don't want to ever talk down about the players or anything like that. It's right, definitely course. not my intention. Um, I wonder, you take Max's four assists away, does anyone else step up and get those? Or are they that much worse off? 
Yeah, I think and it's not that Max can't do it. It's just I think Max really needs to adjust. You know what he needs to do? He needs to play like he did in Baltimore, where he was a little bit more aggressive and a little bit more leadership instead of the mastermind. Yeah. Because in KC, he was more the creating plays, opening up the plays, distributing in the right portion. In As where in Baltimore, he took more shots. In where? You said in KC. Oh, my bad. <laughs> like what? what? Like what? In where? Where now? What are you in Milwaukee. About? Oh. <laughs> I meant to say Milwaukee. Oh, in Milwaukee, that's he, what you're talking he about. was uh, he was a playmaker, and I feel like he needs to be more of a forward now. Yeah. Because I agree with what what Brad said. With uh, Daduka being the bust of the season. I think so. I just it's it's not there for me. Well, I mean, who am I? <laughs> but right. we are the bust of the season, obviously. Anyone argues that, just watch one of our shows. Wait. <laughs> hey. So so taking a, a little bit away from the game, because I know we're gonna get to the games. Um I'm going I'm on the MSL site and I clicked on standings, and there's a link at the bottom that says playoff format. And it said MSL playoff format. 2021 Ron Newman Cup playoff, playoff format is to be determined and announced at a later date. And then I look at the rules, which I don't have in front of me, but the rules say you need a minimum of 12 games. And then I look at the standings right now. And Florida has played four games. And that's a third of their schedule with no playoff format. Yep. And Casey's joining. Yeah, so let's table that and uh, yeah. we'll get into that because I have a lot to say on that one. By the way, our our, our um, oh, Casey's not video joking. is like kind of blurry on YouTube right now. Is it? I don't know what happened. Just FYI, maybe it's my phone. I, I'm gonna blame your phone because it couldn't possibly be anything that we did. Of course not, because we're technical geniuses. I wouldn't go that far. That's okay. fine to me. Yeah, it might just be my phone. But well then, we'll, we'll get back to what we were saying. I stopped my 20 gig upload transfer before we started, so that's probably a good thing. Yeah, this is a good thing. But we have a new subscriber. Welcome, Chris F. Welcome, Chris. We appreciate you joining. We are at 70 subscribers. We should be at 400 subscribers, though. What's this the deal is true. With that? This is true. In the box, what's going on? Let's make this jump. Let's make the shift. Matt says We're doing the opposite of what MASL did. We're going to YouTube instead of Facebook. We're the trendsetters. <laughs> just, just wait until we go to Go Live Sports. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. Well, so so back to your point about so back to my point before Casey joined and then dropped, and you guys probably didn't even see that because he wasn't really full on it, fully on. So right. Florida has one third. So okay, let's let's just say, let's just assume, and and this is probably this might be a bad assumption, but let's assume that the teams are only going to play twelve games this year. I know teams are planning on playing more, but let's just for the sake of this argument say, twelve games is the limit. So Florida's played a third of their, their season. Kansas City and St. Louis have played a fourth of their season. And no one knows what they're playing for. No one knows who's going to make what, what's going to happen. Um, hey, Brad, Hans is Matt. He's just hiding behind a Simpsons name. Uh, you told on him. Yeah, I did. You can't. There's no secrets in here, except for all the guys who don't tell us what their names are in the chat. Um, but so we have teams that, that have a good chunk of their season already done yeah, with no idea what they're playing for. Granted, I'm not even going to call this a bold prediction. I think Florida's going 12 and 0. You think so? Yeah. First I don't know. Five man. games at home to get everything, everything squared away and everything figured out and all the chemistry figured out and all that. And then they have like th their three rosters deep or whatever it is. And we were talking about this earlier today. 
all these teams that are building up this new talent. Wave was doing it. KC's obviously doing it this year. St. Louis has just spent a couple of years doing it. Florida has like no rookies on there. Their backup goalkeeper and some other guy is like the only rookies mm-hmm. on their team. Yeah. And, uh, and granted, rookies to the indoor game because that's their goalkeeper, uh, backup goalkeeper for outdoor. And the other guy, um, I forgot his name. Oh my God. He plays on the outdoor team too. Or so it's another Ortiz. Yeah. Yeah. So. Right, right. So yeah, they're definitely not rookies to the game, but they're rookies to the indoor. But still, they'll they may never see field time. Yeah, I mean, given their positions, there could be. You know, we have we have three teams on the West Coast coming in strong that could potentially also go twelve and all, depending on their opponents and how they do. Um, Florida can't just say, "Well, we're ten and all. Let's just field a." weaker team to save some guys they're gonna have to go all out every game i think i think um florida is gonna have some trouble against so i take back my prediction about ontario by the way okay i take that back that prediction because they're looking uh pretty pretty strong and i think soccers are still are going to be really strong and tacoma is going to be really stars strong Huh, get it? If, 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 if when Florida plays them, I think that's going to be the games that they might lose. Those three teams. Yeah, and, but we'll see how often they even play. Right. That's the other thing because that's, that's coast the to coast. Thing. The the thing that worries me about San Diego. So San Diego lives in a place where they can practice outdoor year round. Mm-hmm. I don't know what the rules are COVID wise but they're not starting training camp until tomorrow. They posted that today. Training camp starts tomorrow and they play their first game two weeks from Friday. Now, granted, there's a ton of talent on that team. A lot of that talent has played with that team before. So yeah. it's not like these guys are just uh, meeting each other for the first time. I, but, think, I think San Diego should just do an outdoor arena. Can, but can they though? I mean, can will will California even allow that? That's the thing. I mean, yeah, kind of the soccer teams are doing their things out there, right? I guess, yeah. So yeah, I don't um, know. Why not? Maybe they the, figured it was cheaper to go on the road. I, I mean, uh, I guess finances and all that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I mean, my, you know, Mike Zimmerman said again, the Wave could have done this when he watched Florida's game. They could have put on, you know, I think the Panther Arena was allowing 100 people, maybe even 150, which would have, would have allowed both team staff, the arena staff enough to run the arena. Obviously, you don't need concessions or anything like that. You don't need, you need some security, but you don't need like all your door security and all the tickets and everything. Mm-hmm. And then you have friends of players or things like that, or, or players' families and in, in spread out, you know, in 50 people right. in the crowd or whatever. But that's right. just not it doesn't make any it doesn't make business sense it yeah. makes soccer sense for sure but it doesn't make business sense and we don't we don't need to talk about that again this week um but i do have a quote from mr zimmerman he said dun 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 so somebody replied this is in the wave season ticket older post and somebody said they were so there was a big futsal tournament down in florida this this past weekend youth mm-hmm. futsal tournament a lot of wave parents were down there and uh somebody posted you know let's hope ib26 gets another hat trick and of course i i make the wise crack of you know good to see COVID hasn't any, had any negative effects on florida's attendance because it was an empty arena and then mike replied and he said we could have done this at panther arena and I said, the only way you could have done this bad of a job is if you picked a bunch of random five-year-old kids to run the broadcast, even then. <laughs> and then he had the comment that I wanted to, to say. He said, this is what happens when you care only about winning and spend your money exclusively on players. Could have bought some better turf, better broadcast equipment, and some staff. And Mic drop. I mean, what else does there need to be said? I mean, that's... Right. That's, and, and that's I mean, how I feel. That's how I feel about, I mean, watching that turf, it's just, 
at one game, one of the big pieces just folded up on someone. Um, uh, Rob Acosta, Acosta, Acosta said that it's like sandpaper right on top of concrete, and that's what the turf feels like. It obviously doesn't look great. You know, this is the turf that they painted green five years ago and turned the yellow balls green by the end of the game. I mean, it just, that just looks bad. I mean, with the numbers and everything, it's just they could do so much more. And I, then, yeah. I mean, we know about the broadcast. Uh, we'll get into that later. We need Matt for that. I think I think we should. I mean, we could at least say the scores and then table it. Yeah, I made another comment. Yeah, I'll make that later. I'll make all the. We'll just sit here. Don't say anything. Just stare at the camera. Just stare. <laughs> I don't know. Did Casey reply? Uh, so he did not. He might be having issues. He tried joining and he didn't. So do you want to ma- message him and say we'll just try next week? Yeah, I'll send it to him now. All right. So next week we'll try with Casey. You'll have to make a new graphic for week three plus Casey. We'll call it the remix. Or, or the Casey remix. The reattempt. No, the I don't re-attempt. know. I like remix. It doesn't make any sense. And that's why I like it. <laughs> so, uh, Matt, how far are you from joining the broadcast here? Let's all watch Gio on his phone. Go no. ahead. No, just go ahead. We'll watch you. No. We'll just watch you. I'm not on my phone. Oh, oh sure you aren't. You're just looking down at nothing. No, I wasn't. So, <clears throat> I got my my sign. Oh, nice. My sign it's actually, Alex it's actually your size. It's my size. Um, well, then. And potentially, I don't know if this is true or not. But I'm going to go on a limb and say that this is probably, I'm probably the first person to have worn an Alex Bradley All-Star Game shirt ever. Because unfortunately, because of COVID, he wasn't able to go. Um, he's fine now. He's, he, uh, I don't know if it was a pickup game or what, but he joined a futsal league and they came in and played the best team in the league and beat him nine to one the other night. It was, it was all him. It was all it was him. probably all him. I mean, yeah. Just, just not even a goalkeeper, just him against five guys. That's what it was. <laughs> Man, I'm so jealous because my Leafy shirt is like a small. Oh, yeah. So, and I know I don't I don't I haven't seen Jay in the chat yet, but Jay Miller said he's like I can't buy a jersey from I can't do any of the jersey auctions because all the guys are too small. And you think about on the wave specifically. Um, Andre Hain is the big guy and he's only six foot three. You would think of, you know, you think of sports and you think of tall players and things like quarterbacks that are like six foot seven or, or, you know, basketball players are almost Mm -hmm. seven feet and everything. And yet our biggest guy almost throughout the league is like six foot three. That's really one of the taller players in the league. I mean, it is, it is soccer. It is soccer. It's a much different, I mean, you get you. So if you're 275 pounds in high school, you're not going to try out for soccer. You're going to go for football. That's just the way that's going to happen. And if you're seven feet tall, you're probably not going to play soccer because imagine. So we saw this, my daughter, when back when she played, um, I think she was U14. We went to a friend of hers uh, on a boys team and it was U14 boys. And the sizes were just, it looked like a really bad, like graph. It, there was, I mean, there's one kid who's like barely five feet tall trying to defend a kid who's six foot two Oof. because just the age and the growth spurts and everything are just so different. Mm-hmm. And but this guy who's six foot two had no control over his body or his footwork or anything, he could barely run straight, much less work with a ball. So it was just like this comedy of errors of like all these little kids, like weaving in and out of the tall kids, the tall kids falling over and getting fouls called, and you know, there's all this. You're like, yeah, these kids need a little bit of time to grow into their bodies and figure out how to, how to run straight first. Oh, my God. It's funny. When I in high school, I don't know why we're going down this rabbit hole, but but in high school, I played soccer and I was. So before I got into like the I played soccer club, whatever. But before I went out and tried out for high school, I was part of the weightlifting club. So 
Oh. I was a, I was 180 playing soccer. Oh, wow. I was like a dama, you know, because I was part of the 300 club. I don't know if you know a 300 club, but it's pretty much when when you do 300, you can either max out or rep 300 in all the six uh, main exercises for the Russian workout, which at the time oh. is is bench, incline, decline, uh, squats, uh, deadlifts and shoulder presses. So it was it was interesting. I used to just pick on people. I bet oh. I'm in the 47 club. Then, if I missed that. that. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I was I was five. T- I, I've been five ten like almost almost my whole life. After the you know the first growth spurt in middle school or whatever, and in high school I weighed 145. Oh wow! I was like rail thin and and thin. yeah, I was in soccer, but I had to make a choice between soccer and music, and I went the music route. Oh but yeah. But when I course. played youth soccer, my nickname was Little Powerhouse. Because oh, they had the, they they didn't have every age group like they did now. They had all the even numbers. And my right, right, right. Yeah, my birthday is in December, so I was always at the tail end and the youngest. So I was like eight years old on the U10 team and 10 years old on the U12 team. But I had the strongest kick of everyone. Like in his 11 year old, I scored a, a free kick from midfield. That's cool. And oh, I, I was cool. amazing. That was like the greatest thing that ever happened to me in my life. Other than except learning to play bass and you know having kids and getting married and stuff like oh, that. Oh wait, yeah, that too. <laughs> <laughs> but uh yeah. So I had a different approach, yeah, different approach to sports. So all the guys who were playing football and everything who were you know, these big jack guys were you know, they, they would never do well on a soccer field. Yeah. And it was all the guys who were in that I mean, yeah. Five I, foot my two. world was different. Yeah. Oh, good. I got it. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Have we killed enough time or do we need to? I think I think we could just jump right into it then because Matt is hungry. Yeah. Everyone's like, what are you guys talking about? Yeah, I know. I, I'm pretty sure, sure, sure we lost everyone. So let's get right into Florida and KC. <laughs> the first one. Let's do the first one. Yeah. So Florida, KC, that was a, like you said, a playoff game caliber it was, well, it was ridiculous. It was preseason and playoffs combined. It wasn't anything in the in the middle. It was half preseason and half playoffs. You know, so, an interesting fact. Florida won, right? They won eight to seven, obviously. Mm-hmm. But they had 30 shots on goal. Not well, 30 shots, not on frame, but 30 shots. And St. Louis, uh, sorry, St. Louis, KC had 19. Wow. So Florida, uh, that was pretty bad. So in indoor soccer, and I don't know if you know the answer to this, and maybe someone in the chat does, um, maybe we should ask Alan Balthrop, who, Balthrop, I don't know how to pronounce his last name, who used to be the league statistician who stepped down for this season. What is a goal? In indoor soccer, so if what we is take a goal? Ho- if we take hockey, no, not was a goal. What is a shot? Oh, <laughs> it's Monday. Leave me alone. It's Monday, March three hundred and forty seventh. I think twenty twenty still because we obviously haven't done anything by going over the calendar year. It's same damn year, same thing. <laughs> same so year. What's the definition of a shot in indoor soccer? So if we're talking hockey. There's no such thing as a shot. It's a shot on goal. So then the shot on, so then the number of total shots on goal minus the saves is the score. Does that make sense? Yeah. So you have 30 shots on goal, which never happens in hockey. That's not indoor. And you have 27 saves. You should have three goals for that team. It's not, that's not indoor. That's not indoor. Indoor considers a shot as an attempt to. You, Kick to, it towards to, the goal? Yeah, like anywhere near the goal. There's a certain uh, – I'm not 100% sure on, on the distance, but there is a, a distance of the goal. So I don't know if it's like this glass and this glass, anything be, be within that, that's a shot. Okay. Because I'll tell you right now, looking at the statistics on the MASL website, granted, take that for what you may. That's um, kind of where I was going. <laughs> uh, they'll say 30 shots – 11 saves 
and then five goals, and then you have this gap. <laughs> right, right. So, and, and, and I know Alan was talking about that either last season, probably two seasons ago, that he was trying to train his people that it's either a shot, a block, or a goal. And those numbers have to add up. It can't be like that, like 30 Oh, shots. you know what? I never thought about in consideration the blocks. So my other question is the plays where the guys run down, let's say the right side, and they shoot far post. But half the times that they actually shoot, it's really a pass for the back post guy. So let's say that misses or the back post guy trips or – he misses the ball altogether. Does that count as a shot then, even though it's really technically a pass? Mm. And then picking on you, St. Louis, what happens when one of the St. Louis guys takes the same shot from the right side and it goes behind him out of bounds? Like, does that count as a shot? Because he was definitely shooting, but does that count as a shot? <laughs> That's just too far. <laughs> They're bad. But... <laughs> No, but I think so. If if I'm not mistaken, I, th I think we, we should find out on this to get the real answer for the fans. But if we're going based off of where indoor came from, it would be the idea of shots on goal plus the shots attempted, whether it's blocked or just not on target, mm -hmm. and then the goals and saves all combined. Yeah. So I'm assuming that's what it is. We'll we'll find out for you guys just to make sure so we don't seem like idiots. Yeah. Oh look, Matt joined at the perfect time. So so speaking of that, not the perfect time, but um on the same line, let's say a guy takes a shot at the yellow line and a guy at the top of the arc blocks it. Is is that a shot still? I feel like something's telling me that anything when anytime the ball comes in the arc of the keeper, that is going to be considered a shot. So whether it crosses that line and just shoots straight up, <laughs> St. Louis, or it gets blocked, I feel like they're going to count that because it's technically in the direction of. Hi, Matt. Hi. Good evening. So I, I wanted to hop on really quick. Um, so, um, <clears throat> so I got my COVID shot today, um, and there's one huge side effect, and it's a headache. And I, my headache is getting a lot worse. Mm. So I just wanted to pop on and say hi, and I'm probably going to go to bed. Um, Good night. So, <laughs> yeah. You want to see? Um, if we give you 30 seconds, see how many f bombs you can drop. Yeah, if if you want, that's that's perfectly Don't fine. Do that. Don't do that. The <laughs> f bomb. F bomb lightning round. Um, <laughs> so what are the what are the games this week? Wait, games? first first air out your grievances, and then while we look, you know, the I really don't have. Oddly enough, I don't really have any grievances. Like the Florida, the Florida broadcast, in my opinion, was good. Um, of course, I it was on my iPhone. Um, St. Louis and Dallas was a close game. Um, you could, oh my God, that was just a lot of wasted opportunities in that game. Um, and then the, the, the second tropics KC game was interesting. I mean, Kansas city kind of showing their feisty side. Um, six cards in three minutes or whatever it was towards the end of the second half. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, and, and I, I get people wanting like more information, but I think the scent, like I've, I've been watching this league for going on like 10 years and they've always said descent. Yeah. Which, which I, I think is perfectly fine. Um, so obviously something was said. So, so let's leave it at that. So at the Leo, at the Leo red card, a yellow card was pulled out first and then the red. Do we think that he said two different things or do we think that the ref wanted to pull a red out? Like, do I you think it's too different. The, okay, so do you think he pulled the things. yellow out and as he's pulling the yellow out, Leo said something else and there the red came out? Yeah, I think, I think Leo didn't stop and 
he got himself a red card, which now gives me – sorry, Matt, if this makes you stay longer, but this makes me ask the question, should he be fined? Well, I, I, I think no, but at the same time, I mean, was he was he – Yelling as a player, yelling as a coach, both. Right. I mean, I don't know. And that's an interesting. That, uh, this is the same. This is the same exact. This is the same ref that gave Bo his red card against Milwaukee a couple of years ago. So he he seems to to kind of pull the red card out when some some not naughty words are said. When someone talks about his mom. I, so, yeah. so Brad asked a good question. You know, was Guernsey fined? I don't think he was fined, but he also wasn't suspended, wasn't he? Was he? I don't think no. we're doing suspensions anymore because this is a non-sanctioned league in a non-sanctioned season. Oh, or a non-sanctioned that's right. Year. Yeah, this is all non-sanctioned. That's right. So, I mean, um, uh, at least a suspension would be. So, you know, I mean, they don't they don't that. suspend people in Kansas City. Yeah, here's my thoughts on oh, suspensions and fines. Here we go. That's what that's what that's what it goes down to. If you <laughs> say something anything short of a a racial comment or a death threat should just be no fine, no no suspension. If you're making yellow death card, threats, yes. <clears throat> Yeah, oh yeah, and I'm fine with I'm fine with a red card for saying stuff. I just don't think it should be a suspension with a red card, or I mean a fine. Actually, there's a there's an automatic suspension with any red card, but I don't agree with anything on top of that. Does that make sense? Yeah. So if if you right, have a red card I, in a game for for an infraction, not for falling out, you get an automatic one game suspension. I agree with that for any red card that's given out. Right, of course. Out. But I don't agree with giving additional red cards if you say. I did this to your mother last night or whatever ref or whatever, blah, blah, blah. Now, if you make a racial comment, you make a death threat. I think those two are, are a, a, a step up, a step above. Oh, and I yeah. think there's, there's further warranted. However, yeah. or, or if you, or if you call a corn dog an inferior uh, food product, I think that's probably, or if you call an all-star me. game, like someone's pet project. Oh, then, I mean, obviously that. Well, then. The so, well, then. Brad, Brad, you're right. He didn't play. He didn't play, but he was rostered, wasn't he? I, I saw the roster right. Do you know, can you confirm that for me, Adam? No, I'm looking at something else. Ah, oh, come on. It's going to make me look it up. What are you making well, a, which, we're on the which subject. Game? Which, which game? For Dallas. Because he got the red card last weekend. So, this weekend – he, I just wanted to see if he was rostered. I know he didn't play, but he might have been rostered. For St. Louis, you mean? Yeah, St. Louis. For he Grand was Green. not on the game day roster. He was not on the game day roster. So I, I take back my point. But maybe let me not sugarcoat my question. Do we think Leo is going to be suspended? No. Well. Okay. Nope. Yes. The one game because of the red card. Well, yeah, but and anything. I think he's. I think he's saying anything on top of that. No, 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 no. I'm saying, are, do you think he's going to be suspended? So here's my. The reason I ask this is because yes, he got the red card while he was on the field. So does that mean he can't be on the bench? I would assume, yes, I would assume uh, that means yes. And yes, his suspension is listed on MSL site right now. That um, and it happened. Oddly enough, it happened last year as well. He got a red card in the game against Rochester. Yep. Um, and then was not. Uh, that, was I didn't see, that was a sanctioned season. Well, I know sanctioned, but he was not in the building uh, that next night against Utica. Yeah. So okay, it's going to so be we'll tough see. because that's that's. Um, They're a different team with him not there. By the way. I don't, so, Matt, know. We're, I don't know if you heard the whole thing we were talking about. We were talking about the fact that Florida has a third of their season played. Kansas City and St. Louis have a fourth of their seasons played. And if they're only going on 12 games, that's a full game that he's going to be out. That's huge for them. And it's versus one of the teams that they probably should be able to beat. But I'm, I'm just going to, I'm going to say this. 
the last time I saw Leo Gibson not playing a game after he got a red card, uh, the team played pretty darn well. Oh, okay. They they That's beat good. they beat Utica. Yeah, but I mean after losing against Rochester, so. Yeah. Uh, well, okay. Given what we saw this season, right? Given what we've seen this far, that first game against Florida and that second game against Florida, they're a completely different team without Leo. Yeah. If we just stick to that, well, they were they were out of the game. They are already lost in the first. Yeah, game. they were. They were. Well, okay. Yeah, they were. They were out of the game then. They were out of the game. Were they much though? And it was like four to yeah. one. Yeah, they were. Yeah. And so they had no... This is why I say that, right? This is why I say that. In the first quarter, they outshot Florida. The second quarter, they outshot Florida. The problem was, is they were pulling the St. Louis where they didn't know how to shoot. Mm-hmm. So, in theory, they could have, because they outshot Florida almost that whole game except the fourth quarter. So, in theory, they could have come back had the le- the game stayed intact. Yeah, but if if I said uh, I I said going going into the third quarter, Kansas City had to come out like gangbusters because Florida was just going to run them into the ground, and that's and that's exactly what happened. Yep. Yeah. Kansas City didn't come out strong in that third quarter, and then Florida just yeah. It, it seemed like Florida would would possess the ball for a minute or so. Whatever would happen, give it up out of bounds goal, you know, whatever Kansas city would get it, make a run down the field for 15, 20 seconds, miss a shot and then go back to, to the same thing. So they were losing the possession battle like two to one, but then they were getting all these shots that never went anywhere. And then they would just get the ball back. Yep. So I, I, yeah, it was, it was definitely a tale of two games for sure. Um, that first, and even in the first game though, I mean, like I, right before you joined Matt, I said it was like a combination of preseason and the playoffs where Florida gave up those three weird goals with the two really bad plays by, by Silva. And then Kansas City in the second half was just like running around in circles, not defending. They couldn't clear the ball past the yellow line and they kept getting it. And they would try to make a pass and it would just go to nobody. And yeah. That that, was just, but, but that first game, I, I'm going to be completely honest. Kansas City should have won that. Yep, hundred percent. That call, in, that call in the fourth quarter, that 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 screwed them big time. Yeah, but they had a three goal lead that they could have solidified. Could have, but I, yeah. I mean, that that call was was not correct, yeah. and and correct. it did kind of alter the the way the game ended. But, well, in, in I mean, overtime, great game, great game nonetheless. But yeah. I, I think Kansas City should have won that in, in overtime. Henry Ramirez. It was a worse miss than Daduga's miss in preseason. Yep. So, so that, but, but also, also, yes, that call changed the game, but there were many opportunities where Casey should have put it away. Right. I'm, I'm, I'm just saying, I, I understand that it, they had a three goal lead and all this other stuff, but, but that, that, should have been a goal and it, it should have it probably would have changed the the outcome of the game yeah uh, i think so this is true yeah yeah this is true. Oh, yeah. Very true so we have okay. that um let's jump to the well and then the next game on sunday was completely different florida looks much more i mean they didn't have the like rob even said rob acosta said you know, they didn't have the three goal, give me head start. So they could play their, their game plan through the whole thing just, and not take their foot off the gas. And they press well, they defend well. Yeah, they, they adjusted, they adjusted really well from two nights prior. Mm-hmm. So, so I think and we I saw think, it. So, so two points, Casey's obviously their weakness was exposed. Like we said, their defense. We called it their defense just needs to be top, especially when playing teams like, Orlando, they have to perform to the most top. Orlando. And, yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> Tropics. 
I'm, I, I, it's, it's Orlando, Monday. yeah. They're, I can't wait to watch them play this year. So, yeah. Tropics, teams like that have that offensive caliber, like the Tropics. The other thing is they cannot become the second St. Louis and not make those shots count. They can't. I'm frozen. No. And Leo needs to stay calm. Also I true. Here, I have here a bot. Oh. I know what that is. Inside the box. It's something wrapped in paper. <laughs> yes. Ta-da. Congratulations. Oh, congratulations to the MASL West All-Stars who are the 2020 Corn Dog Trophy champs. Oh my God. That That's is hilarious. I love that thing. Uh don't oh. leave it there. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of did that on purpose. So uh I will be sending this out to Nick Pereira. Uh, I'll take a bunch of pictures of it here. And then uh, Nick is going to bring it maybe to, I, I think the plan was when people would visit him, he would have them take pictures with it. I don't know if he's going to bring it now. Um, he was concerned about the shape and look of it at first and didn't understand that it was a, a was not an insult to give that to him. Um, yeah. But uh, yeah, so I'll be shipping that out this next uh, next week. It'll probably go out since we have a lot of stuff going on this week. But uh, so congratulations to the All Stars. That took a long time to get that trophy made. Looks awesome, by the way. It, and you know, it's funny. You're they'll like, probably get that. They'll probably get that trophy before I get my jerseys. So speaking years? speaking of that. Have we heard anything about the jersey for Chino? I I have put out the emails and I put out another email. Um, nothing yet. So, who do we have to I'm email? I'm working on them. Huh? I don't know. Who do we have to email? Wait, we could talk so, about that off there. Yeah, yeah, someone in Tacoma. Okay, I'll I'll send them another email because I I still haven't heard anything about my jerseys. I know my jerseys are back in Tacoma. I do know that. But. Oh, that's a good place for them. So, so fun fact, um, yeah, Matt, if you are having them sent to your PO box, have them use UPS. No, USPS, not UPS. Because UPS won't deliver. Well, now they have now they have my physical address. Oh, okay. I put my physical address on everything now. Um, so my ambush gear, I haven't gotten that yet, but I did put my physical address so yeah. got it now so to go back to the games i just want to make two other points uh one I, I really need to stress this and this is why i do not agree with player coaches i really don't because they need to limit their playing time <laughs> they i if i was a coach if i was a coach and i saw leo walking as much as he did he would have been out uh, way long uh, earlier than he was because he was tired. And I know he can make an impact, but why not just substitute yourself off, get yourself your breath, and then come back on? But since you're the coach, no one's going to pull you out. Right. No one's going to do that. He just needs to limit his playing time. And that also attributes to his him losing his head. He was probably tired. He probably made a mistake. Oh, yeah. And – he got frustrated, and guess what? You got a red card from it. Just, yep. I love you, Leo, but just all player coaches, you are our player coach because of your experience and your knowledge of the game. Know your physical limitations. In um, So Everton had a series of Everton lockdown videos, and he did Ian first, and then um, Nick second, and he, he interviewed Huff. But then the person who was putting the video together had some health issues. Um, glad to hear she's fully recovered. But uh, I don't want to name names on here because I don't know how public that should be. But uh, so in his interview with, um, with Nick, he asked that question. He went into the player coach because Everton did it himself. And he went into Nick how, how, how different it is to wear the different hats of, you know, I'm the coach and now I'm on, I'm on the field and do I call my own number or do I take myself out? And 
Nick was pretty, pretty open about the fact that he had to take himself out in situations where maybe he wouldn't like as a player, he would probably stay out there, but as a coach, he would have to think, well, there's probably somebody else right now on the bench, better suited for doing what I need them to do right now. And he would take himself out for that. Right. But yeah, I think, I think, and I don't think Leo was the, I'm the coach. Don't take me out. You can't take me out. I think it was more like, I feel as a player, my team needs me and I have to hold the team on my back. I think it was more of that. And he just, it. he was, out, he was out there for like seven minutes straight at one point. Yep. And I well, was, on Sunday, well. I was, I was going crazy. Yeah. It, and I mean, like you said, and then the biggest thing between Florida and everybody else is their energy. They, they just want it more. And that and if a team that's going to beat Florida is just going to want it more than Florida. Cause they're dropping back a hundred percent all the time. They're rushing forward a hundred percent of the time. When is their time to come off? They'll come off right away and no ifs, buts, and they're just they just want it as a team. Well, and they had, I mean, in that game on Friday, they had three goals that were well, two that were obviously really, really bad mistakes, and one that was not a very good play, and it didn't phase them at all. You didn't you other teams that would almost make them crumble. You know, guys mm-hmm. that have their heads down and they wouldn't be running and they I mean it almost made them work harder. And that's yeah. really what yeah. I hate to use the word championship, but that's what a that's what it takes for a championship team to win. Yeah, and yeah. and so uh, to your to your point earlier, I saw that you you said Florida is going to go twelve and zero. Yeah, absolutely. I, I don't think so. I, I think you're going to see you're going to see one of those West Coast teams if they do play in Florida. I, I think you're going to see one of those teams. You might even see like a Baltimore or a Utica if if they do play. Um. I okay. think you'll see one of those teams break through um, and, and and find a way to beat Florida. Well, I hope, because I, I mean, as much as I like the wave guys that are on Florida, there's a lot of other things I don't like about them, and I think we've been over a lot of that. <laughs> it outweighs his hatred for them. <laughs> and we'll, well, I haven't gotten anything on the broadcast yet. So just wait. Uh, got it. We'll talk about the ass cam. Yeah. Where the only That's... time they ever showed that camera angle was the ref's ass was right there. And it's like, what are you guys doing? <laughs> no, they showed it a few other times. It was better. It was better. It was better on Sunday than it was on Friday. And Friday, I don't think they caught the ball on that camera once. They kept going to it and like the ball was at the other end. Or they were gonna go into a timeout and then they took the ball off the field and they, they went, you know, or, or whatever. They should just do it. They should just use that camera angle when it's like uh, top of the arc right there. You know what they should do with that camera angle? They should throw it in the garbage and buy a new camera. Well, then, this segment so anyway, has been brought to you by... Yeah, so uh, <clears throat> there's only games on Saturday this weekend. There's two games. Um, first is... And I can never tell who's hosting. So the team on the top is hosting? So Florida's hosting Dallas. Yeah. Yeah, and St. Louis. Louis is hosting KC. So, Saturday's game, does Florida score double digits? No. I think it's going to be a closer game than we think. I, I do think Florida's going to win, but I think we are underestimating what Dallas can do. I think it's going to be a close game that Florida wins. So, if we base it off the last game we saw – Dallas looked bad. Statistically and previous experience, uh, previous games, yes. If we go only off of that. But I think Dallas can put on – I mean, look at how they performed against KC. If they bring that type of performance against Florida, I think they could keep them to a close game. So what's the story on Dallas? Nine to four. Not, yeah, that's about what I think. I think that I think Florida will break double digits. So I'll go ten to five. The other thing is, Dallas. I they just need to learn. They need a new offensive person, man. So so what's the st- so I we've I've asked a number of people this, and the answer I've gotten was well, you know, there's just a lot of bad blood between Simon Bozes and Dallas fans and Dallas people, but I've never gotten any information on what that bad blood is. I got one guy explaining to me once that he tries to run his defense like an outdoor team would where they first gain possession 
and then they try to slowly build it out of the back and i'm like well that okay but would that be the reason why all your season ticket holders hate you that doesn't seem like the reason i don't know what i don't know what's going on there something weird i think so from from what i've <clears throat> from what i've been gathering i i think he's from from what i've heard he's not qualified enough um to run an indoor to coach an indoor team but I mean, I've talked to him. I've, I've sat and talked to him for a good five, ten minutes before a game, and we talked shop, and he seems like he's knowledgeable. But I, I don't know. That, yeah. That's just my my opinion on it from, from people I've talked to. I think, I think maybe it's something that actually happened, or maybe it's just the fact that the fans are getting tired of them not getting the results. That, because they, that have, is, well, uh, they have the yeah. talent. They yeah. have the talent just what is going on one of my friends calls them the anti-pokemon yeah because pokemon you got to catch them all and he's like anti-pokemon is you got to lose them all <laughs> so i mean so really thinking... that's what really is because they can put away games is they have the talent to do so they yeah. just don't and i feel bad for the guys especially after what happened last year um yeah and yeah, like said, how close the games have been for them and well, just, at certain points, but then other points in the yeah. games, they've kind of fallen apart. Yeah, exactly. But that comes down to the coaching at this yeah. point. I mean, if, if a team is uh, – Everton said it the best. If a team is not performing to where they can, at a certain point is the player's fault, and if it continues, 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 you've changed players, you've done whatever, now it's the coach's fault. Yeah. And you've just got to call them out for what it is. Yeah. So we're all in the greens. Florida wins. Yeah, by a lot. Double them up, I think. Uh, let's let's pick the last one so we can let Matt let Matt free. The last one is Saturday at seven p.m. Central. It is ambush hosting the Comets. This is going to be really interesting. Both teams have the potential to make this look like a playoff game, and both teams have the potential to make this look like a rec league. It just depends on like what happens and what kind of weird things happen at what time. Um, I think they're going to, I think St. Louis is going to be energized with their first home game. Uh, St. Louis is allowing a number of fans. I think they can get like 15, 1600 or whatever. And that'll be enough to, to give it an atmosphere. So far we haven't seen an atmosphere at all in any of the arenas. Mm -hmm. Um, I think St. Louis opening up the season this way, that rival is that rivalry has always been crazy. Yeah. Uh, regardless of how either team is doing, they always play each other really hard there. I don't want to pick this game. So I'm going to let one of you start first. So I, I'll, I'll, I could pick first. I don't mind. Um, I think St. Louis is going to win for multiple reasons. One, they're just came off the first win Two. Their their home, their their first home game. So they wanna they wanna you know prove the crowd right. It's a rivalry game, like you said. And second, Max has finally finally did something. He had four, he had three assists, th- four assists. Sorry, four, yeah. four assists. So I'm pretty sure he's starting to feel comfortable. If he continues to lead, we'll we'll we'll, we'll get there. And then also they stopped relying on Daduka. Finally, finally, yeah. The Duke is just not doing it for me either. So I think I think St. Louis is gonna is gonna win, and Casey's feeling pretty low. I mean, right now the records are the same as one and two. So, yeah. I think it's it's a perfect opportunity for St. Louis to turn it up. Matt, what do you think? I I disagree. I'm I'm gonna put my undefeated streak on the line. I'm gonna take Casey in this one. Um, and I'm going to base it off of, I know I'm going to base it off of last year, but they, they seem to, <laughs> they played really well without Leo last year in that game. Oh, I forgot um, about that too. Yeah. Most of, most of the guys were on that team. Um, although uh, Robert Palmer is no longer on the team and he right. played a huge role in that game, but I'm still going to pick Kansas city. Um, I think they played better than St. Louis did. Um, so I, I think momentum wise, 
yeah, St. Louis has a home game. Yeah, St. Louis is going to have fans, but from a from a a playing standpoint, I think Kansas City has a, a bit of an edge. Um, so we're we're going to have to see. I, I think for Kansas City to win, we're going to see more uh, Adam James, Kevin Ellis, um, and, and okay. I mean for for St. Okay. Louis. You, what? Who, who who do you think is going to step up as their lead as their scorer? Because Kevin Ellis, is- I'm going to say I'm going to say Kevin Ellis, um, 100. Um, and if St. Louis is to win, you, you're probably going to need to see Max maybe score one or two goals. I, I know he had four assists um, in the game against Dallas, but I I, I think I, I'll say it again. He needs to shoot more. Yeah, but, I agree. 100. percent Agree with that comment that's that's just me so i'm picking i'm picking casey in that one so i wanted to study the injury report here and uh the injury report was last updated on march 9th of 2020 so yeah so it's good yeah so nice no one's injured um and nobody's injured so i think uh i think kevin ellis is your x factor he was injured in the last game against florida so he didn't play. I think if he plays, he's the difference and Comets win by one goal. I think if he doesn't play, I think Ambush takes it by one goal. But I think it's close either way. Yeah, I think it's a close game too. It's a, it, Yeah, oh yeah, 100%. Yeah. And just after we talked about one player not making or breaking a team, I think this is a case where he could be the swing player who can, who can really take it. Uh, yep. and I, Adam agree. James. I agree. Adam James is another one. Sorry, while well, I turn my He's heat looking on. good too. He's, he's playing very well. He, I, I, I agree. I agree. One person cannot make the team, but one person can make the difference in a game. Yep. Absolutely. Absolutely agree with that. Yeah. Yep. All right. So uh, real quick update. Uh, Casey said he can join. He just thought it was mountain time, not central time. So he's like, it's 815. I'm like, no, nah, we go central time. So if you want, I can have him join. Or we could just push it off to next week. It's let's, up to you. Let's just do next. Yeah, let's do next week. We'll do it next week. Okay, I'll let him. I know. have a pay, I have a paid holiday next week. Oh, nice. Oh, uh, look at you. We get some of the bank holidays off. So, what better? Ho- we'll have the Casey holiday. I have a day off tomorrow, so yeah. Well, if you have the uh, day off, you have the whole day off tomorrow. I do have the whole day off tomorrow. Yeah. So, do you want to stay to talk about broadcasts, or are you going to bail? I'm bailing. (laughs) (laughs) All right. I hope you feel better, man. I'm just going to plug this. I'm I'm plugging this really quick. Just get the vaccine, guys. It's this is the only side effect I have. If the GPS tracker causes you to have a headache because it's eating your brain and feeding you false information, I don't know if that's safe. I, I don't know. I mean, I'll, I'll let you guys know uh, how I am tomorrow, next week. Yeah. Like, next week, if I'm drooling um, during <laughs> this, the then problem. there's probably an issue. More um, than normal. But I should. Yeah. So the games are Saturday. Okay. All right. Yeah, both games are Saturday. It's going to be interesting for me because as much as I have not been involved in watching NFL this year, this is the Packers' big playoff game. Is it like right in the middle of both games? So it's like 425. I don't know if that's Eastern. I don't know. It's I think it's 330 our time. So that's gonna be like right in the middle of both games. I, I don't know what I really don't know what time it is. I should probably Yeah, I'll have the kids, so I don't know if they'll yeah. let me watch it, but I'm yeah. I'm just I if I miss the Florida Dallas game, I'll be a little upset, but I definitely need to watch this KC St. Louis. I'll that probably is- watch it. That's the one I really I'll want watch to see. Sunday yeah, yeah. When that's the game. That's off. the game of the week for me. I would I would say absolutely yeah. yes. So Packer game is at 3 35 p.m. Central, which means it'll be there'll be Are like four play, there'll be like four plays and like 30 beer commercials before the Tropics game starts. And talking then, about American football right now. Yeah, a little bit. And then if they finish, okay. yeah, they should finish by the time the ambush game is. So anyway, that's that. Cool. So, um, 
Speaking of COVID vaccine, okay. real quick, did you hear the story where a conspiracy group saw decided to publish the schematics for the 5G tracking chip that was put in the COVID vaccine? And seriously, 100% serious, it turned out to be the schematics for a guitar effects pedal. That's hilarious. <laughs> that is actually hilarious. Oh my gosh! Good stuff. That I makes want my day. To Photoshop like an arm with like a guitar pedal stuck under the skin. <laughs> Just... All right, man. Nope. We hope you feel better. Done. Man, you feel better. All right, we'll talk to you soon. Yeah. <laughs> oh man, I feel bad for the guy, but yeah. he's, he's taking one for the team. Oh, so. Brad got his first shot. No issues. Jack, you're getting your shot next week. Uh, I just saw something that the public in Wisconsin probably won't get it until June. So, so yeah. Brad just got his shot too. Oh man, yeah. Brad, you're a trooper too. All you guys. By the way, fun fact, right? It's a very fun fact. Uh, Florida has two players leading the um, let's call a, a various groups of or brackets of the leadership boards. And obviously, we know who those two players are: is Drew and Ian. So, to Mike Zingerman's Mike's point, congratulations! Please thank Milwaukee. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's and, hilarious. I mean, Chad Vandegrift has never been a a goal scoring machine or anything, but he's been like one of the better defenders in the league for the last. Oh, yeah, of course four or five years and he's he had another solid game another couple solid games i mean he was the difference between the second game and the first game yes he completely took apart a casey's offense yeah and um i mean ricardino so in milwaukee he kind of got a he kind of was in a bad spot because there's so many stars in milwaukee he was that bubble roster player we're talking about ricardino right now right the tiny Ricardinho. Okay. Cabrera. Yeah. Okay. Um, cool. He was the, he was kind of that bubble player. He was the 14th or 15th guy. And then he got hurt. And mm. I think that pushed him a step back and he didn't really catch back up. And him moving to Florida was like no surprise to anyone. I, I, I hated to see him go because we actually definitely could have used him last season, but uh, he's, he's finding new legs and, in Florida, it's a good to see. It's always good to see players you like doing well, regardless of where they are. Right. Even yeah. in Florida. Even even in Florida. Even in Florida. No, so, but and and then so I think Ian's going to be MVP. By the way, I'm shouting this right now. Ian's going to be MVP, and Lucas Sousa from Casey is going to be Rookie of the Year. All right. I'm not going to argue that. I I. Like we talked to Ian, I think, I think part of the reason he wasn't MVP in the past couple of years is because he and Max split so many points and so many. But like you said, they should have made him co MVPs, and that would have been that would have made more sense than anything. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm shouting that now because those two are looking. So, Sousa, the fact that this is his first year officially in the league is mind blowing. This kid is good. Yeah. I mean, he's. I mean, he is technically a kid, but. <laughs> he's he's good and he he has what seven points uh ian has 11 i mean he's right behind ian so it's kind of impressive well he has seven of... points and two losses and Ian yeah. has those points and all those wins exactly so yeah that's uh it's, it's gonna be interesting to see it's it, it'll be interesting to see if ian can keep it up with all the other star names that are on that team i mean he's been the difference in two games already yeah. I mean, free that first game, he hat trick, he had a hat trick and two assists. And not to mention one of those goals was a pretty much a buzzer beater. Yeah. So he has twelve hat tricks against Kansas City in Jesus his career. <laughs> that's so that's <laughs> hurtful. That's just painful. I mean, that's insane. I didn't I didn't realize that. And I saw it a while ago. Um, mm. I saw him score seven goals against Chicago once. 
It's oh, like, man, okay, I would have quit. We're gonna I do this quit. all game. If I was a defender, cool. I would have quit. <laughs> well, and and we, you know, we were talking about like the the Rochester games last year. You know, we beat them like fifteen to two or fifteen to three or whatever. All and then we we ended up leaving. I think we we had to go somewhere right after the game, so we left with the whole crowd. And you you know you see tons of kids and they're all super excited and all sugared up by whatever their parents gave them. And all the kids are like, did you see Ian Bennett score all those goals? Did you see him? I love that. It was I just like, that. this is what the sport's about. I love that. That's um, awesome. Let's talk what the sport's not about. Oh Lord. I tried to shitty avoid ass broadcast. <laughs> and oh, I've decided like, like that <laughs> for every game I watch, I'm going to rate the audio and the video quality out of a 10 point scale. We should get a sponsor uh, for this moment when you start talking about sponsor for this moment is the corn dog trophy. And the corn dogs in the background. Down, the one that down, may or may not be wall. hiding some holes in the wall that we won't talk about. Um so I'm not gonna talk about <clears throat> like how much the announcers get wrong or mispronunciations of names or um, camera going into the crowd too much or things like that. I'm going to talk about really your, your overall quality. So audio quality is my mic. Is my microphone this loud where it sounds like crap all the time? Stop it. Don't do that. Sorry. Back to normal. Is the video is stuttering, jerky, gone, whatever. That's the kind of things that I'm going to talk about. So if we- Can you turn it up a little bit? Just a little bit. All right, just a little bit, just a little bit. How's that? There you go, there you go. Okay, so- See how that works? You want me to turn it up all the way? No, 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 no. I, I was just saying, that. see how that works to the- to the. Because it'll, it'll put a red light on if I go all the way. And I think the red light means it's good. And the more <laughs> red you see, that's, the, that's better. <laughs> So, no, that's not how it works. That's not how it works. I don't think so. So, <laughs> so uh, for for comparison's sake, let's say a ten out of ten broadcast is anything you see on network TV, or right. ESPN, or FS1, FS2, even some of the Fox Sports regional networks or MS, uh, not not MS, uh, NBC Sports, NBCSN. Mm -hmm. we'll say those broadcasts we'll consider those a 10 out of 10 granted there's issues there every once in a while sound will cut out every once in a while um there'd be a weird camera glitch but they're always on top of it like immediately and they always fix it so i'm gonna that's our baseline anything there is considered a 10 out of 10 the best game we've ever seen in the masl is probably that good probably considered a 10 out of 10 uh, i'm going on video quality uh video how if it's blurry or, or clear, I'll go a little bit into camera angles and camera uses, like the ass cam in Florida doesn't help them any. So that said, Friday night's game, Florida. I give the audio a five out of 10. I give the video a four out of 10. Audio okay. was quiet. It was Every, they don't have a limiter on there. So every time they yell goal or they say something louder, it's clipping and it's not as bad as some other cities. <coughs> <St. Louis. coughs> uh, but that's what it, and the video is just bad. The video yes. frame rate mismatch. You look at it on mm -hmm. a bigger screen. It just looks bad. It's hard to watch. It's jerky. It's not very clear. And, and just, I think they tried to fix that on Sunday by putting by having the camera zoomed in, but it, I don't know why that, I don't know why they thought that would help because then you're moving the camera and you're getting these, these weird motion. So that's Friday, it's Friday's game. Um, Florida on Sunday loses a point in audio and they go down to four out of 10 and the video was the same. So that's a four out of 10. The audio on Sunday seemed worse. Like, it, like when Rob Acosta first came on, he was twice as loud as Brian Ackley was. Um, and my comment that I made, and I don't remember where I made it, 
is, and this is before this is before Rob came on. It's Twitter. and I'll read the quote that I said I wrote. Brian Ackley is a class act and shouldn't have to apologize for what his organization did to his image with that broadcast, because he was the only one from Florida or the MSL that's publicly apologized for that travesty of a broadcast the first yes. time. And he should not be the person. I appreciate the fact that he did that, but he should not be the person that feels necessary to do that. Yep. They could Agreed. have commented, they could have 20 seconds in a Twitter post, Facebook post, they could have acknowledged Just that. a statement, a general statement on all their social media platforms. Yep. Instead, we get the fourth middle finger and fifth middle finger that we think, as far as I'm concerned, they don't care about the fans. They compare, they can, they, care more about winning and everything is about winning to them and it's it's not about the experience and as we know this sport is all about the experience yes and i feel wins. like I, so to make a comment on that before you continue with your ratings i i feel like florida to a certain height in the let's just call it the authority structure <laughs> mm-hmm. there are people that care and there are people that are trying to do things because we love I mean, you could see the social media side where they have fan, the fan fest, they have content that they put out consistently for the fans. And and obviously the players feel good. And obviously the fans, they have a supporter group. Obviously there's some kind of fan engagement there, right? As where the more distance fans may not get that because at a certain level in that totem pole, they just don't care. Yeah. And that's where I feel like there's that that fall off. Like, if the fan experience there is so good, if you have a supporter group there, the f- players feel good. Obviously, everything going on there is fine, but everything at a distance is not. So you yeah. also need to work on that side. And just fix your audio. Fix your audio, fix your video, and, and I guarantee it will be much better. And then you can also now, the fans will feel appreciated. Like, okay, they're giving us quality product. I'm not, don't have to be there for them to care about me. I feel better that I support Florida. Especially this year. Especially, Especially this, year. this year. When you're, and, and it doesn't even matter. We've gone into this about the, oh, it's the same cost as a smoothie or cup of coffee or whatever. You're charging for a product that's substandard. Yep. And it's, it's undeniably worse than it was last year. And now you're charging for it. Um, Brad also brought something up that I forgot about, even though Brad mentioned it already, and I told him we'd talk about it. Oh. Somebody had their mic up to their mouth and was you know, breathing in it the whole time. Nobody wants to hear that. Um, so it's like, and and, and I have oh, my yeah. So I I worked with a guy who had some kind of weird sleep apnea problem and literally sounded like Darth Vader. Like oh, you would man. see, he would I feel bad. I made that joke now. <laughs> it's like, dude, are you gonna die? Because I don't want to be anywhere near if you do. Just anyway, the breathing in the microphone that's yeah, there's there's windscreen specifically for that, yep. and you just place it so it's not right under your nose so they don't catch your breathing because it's yep. it's not mouth, <laughs> it's not mouth breathing, it's nose breathing, um, is what usually picks that up. Mm-hmm. And, and people, there's no way you can hear it. You don't realize it when you're doing it. But something that's gone off on a small tangent here, something that's really bugged me about these broadcasts over the years is it seems like nobody who's running the broadcast is actually watching the broadcast. Yes. Like, Agreed. let's pick on your voice that's now been rectified. How can you run two years with your audio 10 seconds behind your video and nobody knows it and nobody can mm-hmm. do anything about it. Mm-hmm. And, and someone told me they finally took it up to Ed Hale and said, here, watch this. And Ed Hale was like astounded. Like, how can you be astounded that the product you are putting out is shit? Yep. I feel like, I feel like a lot of these teams would benefit by, by investing more on the operation side because they would bring these things to people's attention if you don't if you're not paying someone to you know you have to i mean we're professional sport you should pay someone to to show you how much you're doing or how well you're performing yeah you know if you don't have the cost or the the 
the expense or whatever the the ink whatever you want to call it for that at least task someone you already have on payroll to just check the broadcast see how it's doing what can it be fixed pay a fan 100 bucks a game to message you with feedback during the game exactly and then do things and message them back goes did this help is it better yeah or yeah. do something or watch your own fucking broadcast even and after the game just watch it just pay attention i, get, to I gotta give it up to the masl because they're on there talking and if someone says something they'll respond right away and i don't know how much i know for example like i had said something about volume and then the masl responded to me and i think this was a dallas not one of the dallas games and right away it was fixed. Hmm. Right away it was fixed. And that wow. they usually have a con and like so I've talked a lot with Jeff Hughes on the broadcast over the years because that was his job. He was the game day guy. He was the guy working with all the teams before the games, getting everything set up, and then talking to him throughout the games. And he would every once in a while he would ask me, like, hey, what's going on here? What's going on there? What's going on with this? And I'm like, Well, here's what's going on, here's what's going on, here's what's going on. And, a lot of times he was able to fix it. So, but, but every team needs that. And I mm -hmm. think the answers that we get of, well, there's nothing we can do. Sorry, old equipment, bad internet connection. All the fans are sitting under the camera. There's nothing we can do. You know, I just threw that in there. Cause that was a common excuse, but it, <laughs> it's like, well, what, like, what, 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 how come we can't fix this? It's 2021. It's not 1985. Um, so there's no reason you know, there's, there's high the other school question, teams right? charging parents to watch broadcasts that right. are better quality than this. Right. But So here's the other question, right? All these other teams are willing to hear that out or willing to react or willing to do something. At a certain point, we have to start blaming the owners because the league can tell these owners like, hey, you got to do this. Hey, you got to improve this. Oh, yeah. But I then 100%, the I 100 percent blame Florida's owner. For paying yeah. the players and not doing not caring anything about his team otherwise right? anything because, about the presentation of his team because i feel like the league is trying to set a standard trying to do what they can to push their owners to do it but if their owners aren't doing it we have to figure out or they not we because we're not anything to do with the league besides a bunch of fans that love it yeah. is that they have to find a way to hold their owners to that standard or force them to that standard to meet that standard yeah. So I, this actually brings up. So I, I used to work for a healthcare company local here and they had this commercial and it was this guy who get, who pulls into his driveway outside of the house is completely immaculate. He he's, gets out of like a Mercedes or something. Perfect suit, perfect everything, briefcase. He uh, goes up, he notices a, a, a leaf on a bush that's out of place. So he takes his little scissor out and trims it off. And then he goes in the house, closes the door, the doorknob falls off, a picture on the thing falls off. The house is in complete disarray. There's dishes everywhere. And the basic thing was like, you know, you can look good on the inside, on the outside, but how do you feel on the inside kind of thing? That's what I feel about this team. Because Ian even said they treat the players great. And I've heard that by a number of people that, you know, from, from the player mm -hmm. level up, they treat the players like gold. It's, it's the gold standard of playing, but like there's, without the fans, you would be nowhere. And you can win, you can buy your championship, you can win your championship, you can hang your banner in front of all tens of fans that you have in your arena that you've lied and said there's 2,600. But when you put out this kind of product, it, it doesn't help anybody. Yeah. By the way, the other night, I couldn't sleep because there was no game on. It was like 1.30 in the morning or whatever. And the movie Semi-Pro was on with Will Ferrell where he's on the Florida tropics. And that's where... Andrew Haynes got the name and I managed to see the clip just in time to see the corn dogs section. Oh, the one he was telling us about. Yeah. So it's, it's uh, they had a promo where if they score more than 125 points, everyone in the place gets free corn dogs. So then they talked about that and it was all over. And then he was like, can we just re relax? You know, we're up by seven. And then they ended up scoring like 126 and Will Ferrell like left out of the building after, you know, that's when the ref goes like corn dogs, Jackie corn dogs. <laughs> so that's very important and, and uh, on topic for this channel. Of course it is. But yeah, I, I just, I just feel like it's, it's the, as a fan, it's a slap in the face. Yes. 
as a fan watching free on YouTube, I would feel like it's a slap in the face, but I would understand that, you know what? Team's got to put money where the money comes in. Right. Now you're charging it. Now you've slapped me in the face and you kicked me in the nuts. It's just like, by the way, on Sunday. Wait, before you lose your train train of thought, there's one game you have to, um, I know I'm getting, I'm getting there. I'm getting there. Oh, okay. So on Sunday, did Drew Ruggles score with his nuts? I think so. It looked like it. It might have been his thigh. He didn't want to shake anyone's hands. He was kind of running, and he ran right to the bench. Yes, he did. Jay is finally here. We can start. Oh, welcome, Jay. So, game number three, which is Dallas on Saturday. What I'm going to do when we go, going forward on these broadcasts is if there's a doubleheader, I'm not, we're going to talk about those two games first, even if they're a day apart and they have a game splitting them. So yeah, we'll talk about Florida Friday, sense, Florida Sunday. Wrong. Yeah. Then we'll go back to the Saturday game. So Dallas Saturday. I give video six out of ten. Um, <sighs> I thought it was better last weekend. It was. But the, the camera work was weird, and the main camera was zoomed way out. So like you couldn't see player night. It was the same complaint that people had about Kansas City, where the cameras were just way out there. And they had these weird corner angles. Like, you're not going to be able to see if a goal was scored if you're showing me the angle in line with the glass where it blocks all the angle. It was just some weird stuff going on. But it was good quality. There were no um, frame mismatch, like jerkiness issues like there were right, yeah. And, you know, how's my emotion? Mm-hmm. My emotion's pretty – actually, it's pretty good, isn't it? I'm just going to keep doing this. Oh, my God. No, but, um, yeah, so their video was good. Their their video was better last week. I think I think with all teams, if we pick a person to do it, let them stay the whole time. Yeah. I Last week I would have given it a 7 out of 10 just because it wasn't as crisp as it could be. But I think a 7 out of 10 with this league this early in the season is, is very good. Yeah. Um, Brad, I did notice that. So Brad said, interesting side note to the Dallas feed, found it strange that it was a Dallas feed, but all the commercials were from St. Louis. And I thought, okay, maybe what they're doing is they're doing a, actually, I know the answer to this, but I'll finish my thought. I first thought maybe they were doing, okay, we'll show away commercial at the home broadcast, but they didn't do that in, in uh, Florida. But I think I know the answer. I think Dallas has a TV deal down there and I'm guessing what's happening is they're playing local Dallas commercials on the yep. TV station. Yes. So they needed something to fill in the broadcast, and that's why the St. Louis commercials came in. Yes. Just to guess. I don't have, I have so, no so, so I think we can ask Scott about that to confirm it for us. Yeah. But I'm pretty sure that's what it is because he was telling me, like, all the games on there are free. If you, Obviously, you lived on there, and you, and you have that channel, that local station, and you have, obviously, all the commercials from them locally. So – I think that's just what it was, was to fill in that, that yeah. space. Just, just a guess though, Brad. I mean, we could, we could probably, yeah, if you want to ask Scott this week. Yeah. Yeah. I'll ask I'll him. Figure out. Yeah. I'll ask so him. unfortunately for Dallas, um, and maybe this was only the fact that I was watching on a, like a home theater setup and you fr- do this. Yeah, I'm here. I'm frozen, but I'm here. Okay. I give Dallas's audio a two out of 10 and I'll tell you why the quality was fine. There was no weird clipping, no distortion, no everything. You almost went dead. <laughs> but the the difference in volume level between the announcers, which is way down here, and the commercials, which is way up here, was insane. And I have, you know, I have a 5.1 Sono system with a big subwoofer. And when those St. Louis commercials kicked in, it, nothing against St. Louis. When the commercials kicked in, I'll take the word St. Louis out of there. If I had the volume loud enough where I could hear the announcers, the commercials were so loud, it rattled the windows and actually like jumped me out of my seat. So I either had to mute it every time there was a commercial, which means I couldn't get up and do anything, or I just had to turn the game volume down so low that I could almost barely hear it. And for me, that's like almost useless. So I just gave it a two out of 10 because I couldn't hear most of what was going on. So I wonder, I wonder if that was because St. Louis provided the volume. I oh, was sorry, provided the video. And that's why 
Dallas was thinking one thing and the video that was given to St. Louis was different. It, it could be. I know, um, I know Jack Lewis and Scott Wagner, uh, Wag, Wagner, 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 yeah. Run the, run those broadcasts and they're really, they care a lot about the quality of their broadcast. I'm hoping they're right. watching this. I'm wondering if now that we meant to talk about the commercials and now that I had that epiphany about a eh, brilliant mind light bulb ding, thing. Yeah. Um, I wonder if it was the fact that the Dallas commercials were all at the same volume because the St. Louis commercials were in there. They were monitoring the Dallas, because I know they monitored their stuff and they fix it actively throughout the broadcast. Right, exactly. I'm wondering if they were monitoring the TV feed and not the the hmm. Facebook feed. So if you guys hear that, the St. Louis, the, those commercials in the Dallas broadcast are entirely too loud. Yes. Like cut the volume down seriously by half of what yep. they were, if not more. Yep, um, I agree. But besides that, it was good. Besides that, it was good. It just, the volume just killed it, killed the experience. So I, 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 the first time it happened to me after that, I just muted the games after that's that's annoying, but. If if it's bad enough that you have to mute the games, that's a one out of 10 to me. Yeah. This was barely good enough to, to have it be a two out of 10. Uh, Adam Grosskreutz asked, "Do we know how many feature games MS will have per month?" I don't. I thought they were gonna have one every week, based on the way the first one came out, and apparently that's not true. So maybe one a month, but that's only gonna be like four games. So I, 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 I have idea. a feeling. I don't know the answer to that. I, f- I have a feeling they're going to be based off of who's playing. So if it's like a, a desired game, or I'm frozen, ain't I? Yeah, if they want to crank their numbers up and say there were twenty three thousand views and then make it free. Yeah, I think um, I think I think they're gonna want to do um, like, for example, when uh, San Diego plays Florida, they're probably gonna make that a featured game. But does featured mean free? That's I think that question. that was the question. How many are they, how many are they gonna make free? So there I mean, was I, a. I could see them making that game free. There was a post, especially if it if it, oh never mind it's it's a Florida. Oh, there was a great post. Uh, Brian Halberg Halberg said, "Is there a free game this weekend again?" And then Sydney replied, "If the feed is gets crappy enough." <laughs> we gotta love our fans, man. Like, we gotta absolutely. love our, our. Yeah. It's so. In 2020, it, let's go off on a little. Uh, oh no. In 2020, I I noticed I was becoming very, very negative. And I I made efforts to try to be a more positive person. And I think I succeeded. Um, there were a lot of cases where I would uh, get involved in conversations or things or I just was like, see ya. In 2021, I embrace, I'm a, going to embrace that and I'm going to bring my cynical side back. Oh, it's still no. gonna be positive but I'm just going to be more cynical about it because it's just, we're living in this like really surreal time where like, what the hell is going on is the question you ask yourself 10 times a day. Um, we got people breaking into the Capitol building. One of them is like a, I don't know if you, I don't know what kind of music you listen to. I used to be like an eighties metal head growing up. 80s and 90s and I've and I of course I listen to funk and and jazz and borderline disco now um but mostly funk uh the lead guitarist from the band Iced Earth was one of the ones who made like the top 10 FBI most wanted posters from being in that that pro- protest at the Capitol building so if shit like this is going on why can I not be a cynic why can I not be a cynic? So I'm embracing my cynical side. 2021 will be a better me. I will be more of an asshole. I will be more of a cynic. And I'll be more positive all at the same time. I'm positive I will be more of a cynic. How's that? That's perfect. <laughs> That's what we're here for. We're here to, so, to hold everybody accountable for the league we love and at the same time praise it for when it does good. Yeah. So uh Tropics. Uh, aim for a better broadcast than a four out of a 10 this Saturday. Ambush. 
ambush, ambush. Don't F this up. <laughs> Shelly, input gain. Two words. Input gain. Go to your AV guy and say, do you know what input gain is? And if he says no, you just kick him right out of the building. Don't even ask. Don't say anything. Just go. You're out. You're, maybe, you're maybe, maybe do this before the game. So do it like well, tomorrow. So that way you can find someone to replace him. I'm holding a red card in my hand. You can't see it because it's not there. But the red card, the AV guy. Because your broadcasts have a potential to start out at a 7 out of 10 this season if you can fix that audio. Yeah, agreed. So that's my plea. Um, let's We'll switch topics. Let's talk about the new ball. Oh, I like that new ball. Don't do this to me. No, no. This is actually it was interesting. It was brought up in the um, second game, Florida, Dallas. second Florida game. Oh. Um, so when we were on the field in the all-star game, but that you missed because you didn't want to be there. You don't want First to of all, that's not what happened. <laughs> I was truly disappointed by missing this. And I know. I, miss, I missed it for the rare chance to sit on my ass because they canceled the tournament last minute. So, you know. Yeah. So here's, here's what will happen. Not this season because we're still going to be in the middle of COVID through summer, I think. Next season, you and no, Matt probably. and I are meeting up in a central place. We're going to a game together. Like, I mean, like it's gonna central be in USA or like central distance no, you, from Central in our league. And we're going to a game together. We're going to hang out for the whole weekend. Okay. So book it. I don't know where. Obviously Milwaukee somewhere, but I don't know exactly when. Um, I hate him. <laughs> He's obviously Milwaukee. Okay. You <laughs> know what we could do? We should just all take turns, right? Do like a weekend in each place. Sure. We'll start at Milwaukee first. I'll meet you guys at the next. <laughs> okay. So, um, and, you know, a couple balls came our way every once in a while, and we got one to kind of look at and everything, and uh, they're slippery. So if you take the sole of your foot and you put it on the ball and you, like, do that, you can actually make it do, you know, like when you were a kid, when you would do, like, the flick the little, like, the coin, it would, go like, roll back. You could do that with the ball right on the turf. And I was like, wow, these things are slippery. I wonder if they'll break in. And they did mention that on the broadcast that uh, the strikers like them because they're lighter and they fly, as we've seen. And, and this is going to tie into exactly, you, you know exactly where I'm going here. Yes. They're lighter. They don't take as much power to make fly. But the goalkeepers say because they're more slippery, they're harder to handle. And because they're lighter, they do funky things in the air. Yes. Um, yes. So I love it. I, I thought of this. Jay, if we're going to Rochester, we'll bring the whole crew out because I want a cannoli donut and I want Soccer Sam's pizza. Have you seen the pictures of the cannoli donut? They look good. Holy crap, I want one of those. They look good. All his whole donut, I always see like good things about his donut shot. So I wonder how good it really is. Though I'm not a really big on donuts. We made fun of them because they made donuts for Florida when they came in. It's like, here, have a bunch of donuts and then kick our asses all over the field. But that was kind of the joke, but I thought it was a cool thing to do. I, I, I met soccer Sam in person. He's a great guy. He and I will get into it here and there, That's but the we'll way. always, it's like Zimmerman and I we will always walk away with a handshake and a, and a respect for each other. Right. Of um, course. Like everyone say bad things. But anyway, back to the ball. The ball looks amazing. I love the way it looks. I'm, I'm glad to finally see it out on the fields. Yes. Um, but I wonder if that is part of the problem with some of St. Louis's and Kansas City shooting over the weekend. Was it in Dallas, though? That was a question. It, it was in Dallas. It was, okay. It was in Dallas. So it was definitely and in all the games this weekend, then. Yes, it was in all, in all yeah, three, two of the three games, yeah. So I think I think – the shooting may be effective for a little bit until these balls break in because they're going to, they're going to take some time to, to get adjusted and everything. I Hold on. I have a quick question. Is Brian Farber a forward or a defender? I think he's a forward. He has to be a forward with how fast he is. I'm thinking he's a forward, but I just want to, before I make my comment, I, I wanted to con- confirm 
Well, regardless. We can't have a defender making a ball for the league. What are you talking about? I think that would have been better, but he did a great job. But he definitely made it for the forwards because I heard that in the broadcast that the forwards love it, the defenders hate it, and the goalies are getting used to it. So I think it, with some time, we'll get we'll get used to it. I, I love the fact that it's a ball designed for our game and not an outdoor ball placed into our game. Forward. So I love that fact. So I want forward. forward. Sure. The ball is beautiful. I was juggling it with one foot the other day, and it's not that bad. I just felt guilty doing it with all the signatures on it. So hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. So how far are you out of having knee surgery? I was sitting down. So how far out were you from having surgery? When I did this? Exactly 30 days. <laughs> yeah. And you're juggling a ball that's signed by the entire team? With my right foot, though. All right. Okay. <clears throat> all right. All right. And sitting down. And sitting down. All right. All right. I'll give it to you. See? I was I was careful. Did you break anything inside? <laughs> inside no, I didn't. I didn't. I didn't. <laughs> Did you hit the, the sprinkler above? <laughs> no, I didn't. Oh, we need that clip. I wish we could show it. We got to uh, We gotta get permission to show these clips, man. What clips? All of them. <laughs> um, so the clip from uh, that game was sent to me from a fan not related to this broadcast or the league at all. So should we be able to do it? We should be able to show it. We should be able to show it. I think we should show it. Uh, let me find I've it. had enough beers. I think we should show it. It's like I haven't had any beers. Um, let's see. Sydney sure should can... be proud of me. I haven't been drinking on the show. Okay, first I want to make sure that nothing is showing here of who sent it to me. You know what? Oh, me... but while we're on this topic... um. Uh, can I do a quick summary of what happened in Mexico, all the arena soccer games? Yes. Because I know it's going to take you a bit. So for those that are following the arena soccer world in Mexico, we had two matches. Uh, we had Marlins, uh, Club Marlins versus Club, or sorry, uh, Reynosa. And they won, Reynosa won 11 to 10, which was a great game. So if you want to see it, minus the language barrier it was a great game a lot of back and forth and then the game before that was Selección Moncla versus oh who was it oh right El Sapo Sapo's FC and it was a blowout game that Selección just blew them out of the water it was eight to two so it's pretty bad you need those Mexican teams back in our league we do um, really so do. it's funny it's funny you say that so La Selección which is the the team that has the lion at one point, they had Segura, Segura, Christian Segura. They had um, Edgar Torres. They had um, Escote, who is now in San Diego, by the way. They had Brandon? what? Brandon. Yeah, he went. He went back to San Diego. How he got over there, I don't know, but he's back in San Diego. And they that. had they signed Brian Aguilar. Imagine those four players on one team. Oh, oh. The things they were doing. Oh. I'm telling you, watching when I first came, when I first started watching, when I first started really getting into the league, because we had probably two seasons we went to wave games that I didn't watch anything online. And mm -hmm. we only watched the home games. And then I found out, oh, we're playing these online. And I started watching everything. And then I just started watching as many games as I could. Solis de Sonora was, was in the championship. And just watching them play was just magical. It it's is. Like, Holy crap. And then they left, but almost their whole team just kind of went like this to RGV. And it was them plus a couple other stars. I was like, holy crap, this team is really good. And then they left again. And then it's like, okay, Monterey is almost, you know, the the, the team to be yeah. now. And now Solis just come back. It came back and they started, you know, because of the visa issues, they actually got a lot of their players back. Yeah. It was fun to watch. All right, so this is a clip. Um, M3, my... <clears throat> Omaha Kings versus Demise, Springfield Demise. Springfield Demise. So this is in Missouri. This is live from a, just a cell Please phone. enjoy. This is what happens when you kick the ball up too far into the ceiling. 
So that's that. <clears throat> the funniest part about that whole thing was when they brought the one little tiny bucket and it, people were just saying that bucket is for decoration. It's not doing anything because you could clearly see like the cascading waterfall clearly not going into that bucket. It was hilarious. And then they started sweeping the thing. Oh, yeah. I felt bad. Um, New Mexico's New Mexico Runners Arena Soccer just followed us an hour ago. Um, Sweet. YouTube. So thank you for the subscription. Um, let me see if I thank can you. find this. Now that we're talking about water and Oh, that was such a good moment. Good moment, good moment. This is M3 at its finest. Yeah, I mean, what are you gonna do? I I I've seen so at the at the one of the youth uh, facilities that, that's around us, there was a there's the netting that goes all the way around, but there's a gap up by the ceiling, like in the last girder. And I've actually seen someone and, and then behind the field is the concession stand and i saw a ball oh, fully man. launched from the field over into that little gap which isn't more than like a ball and a half width or whatever into the concession area <laughs> oh my god and when you're working concessions and i mean those concessions places get insanely busy oh yeah the last thing you're worried about is a ball flying oh, in there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah that happens at the blast not a surprise but that happens at the blast uh, arena, all at CQ arena. They're they're either hitting the concession zone or they're hitting the TVs, the poor TVs that have to oh. change every so often. It's pretty bad. I mean, that's what happens when you know we're so close to the the fields and no netting. I found uh, here. I'm gonna I'm gonna play this because I found possibly one of the best outdoor water related um this is a great way to to call that a night <laughs> yeah we're, we're almost done here so uh so here watch in kazakhstan here's oh, the corner no. kick that went on okay. <laughs> Oh gosh. That has to be perfect. <laughs> I saw that a couple of years ago. I'm like, oh, that is one of the best things I've ever seen. Oh, that's perfect. <clears throat> well, guys. The, the truck pumping the water out of the sea. Yeah, time. just trying to clean it up, but it's not working. <laughs> yeah. So, guys, uh, we want to thank you for joining us tonight. Uh, next, sorry about Casey. It was a little bit of a mix of uh, time zones and stuff like that. We'll have them on next week. Anything else besides that, Adam? I don't think so. Two games on Saturday, nothing on Sunday, nothing on Friday night. I, we might as well just have a show Friday night. <laughs> Any special guests? <laughs> Should we have Casey on Friday? <laughs> we could get Casey. No, I like I like having Friday nights off and doing this on Monday. No, me too. I've I've enjoyed it. Fans, let us know, or people watching, please let us know how you feel about this because we enjoyed Mondays. I've enjoyed Mondays. Yeah, I mean, for us, it keeps it as much as we like talking for four hours. I know there's a couple of you that stay for the whole thing. Adam Grosskreutz is like my my uh, journeyman uh, who stays for like almost every show, every single minute of every show. So I appreciate yeah. that. I know. There, I mean, we've had like twelve viewers concurrent through the entire show, uh, so that's that's great to see. Monday we kind of picked because 
once you get through the week, you don't know what's going on. Typically Mondays was a good, really good day to, to mm-hmm. recap the weekend games. The league doesn't really do a mini announcements on Mondays. So there's really not a lot of news and uh, we can always pick that up the next week or whatever. So I think I thought it was a good day. Um, yeah, I agree. And then we didn't want to have shows on Fridays and we didn't want to keep changing them. So, oh, we'll have a show Friday unless there's a game and then we'll change it. And I, I think uh, Tacoma's running into that now where they didn't want to have a game the other night or a show the other night because of the game. And then now they're yeah. going to start traveling and things. So they're going to, they're going to have to pick it or just abandon their show depending on their travel schedule yeah. and everything. But uh, I like the Mondays. Mondays is good. Love oh, Mondays. Adam likes, Adam likes the recaps and he's, he's watched the most minutes of anyone other than us. So <laughs> that'll work. Yeah. And uh, still enjoying YouTube. I, if, um, I like the format of the way YouTube looks for us much better. Oh. So that yes. reminded me. You, we said YouTube reminded me, guys. We have a little side project coming out. Uh, it's about the M3 teams. I, I'm gonna put more information out, but just keep an eye out. We're working on a little side project of the M3 teams. If I haven't reached out to you and your M2 three team, I'm sorry. It's just I'm working my way through it. Expect for me to reach out to you. That's cool. all I'll put for now. Sounds good. Will it be a movie like the Wings movie? Will it be a movie? Yeah. I guess you can call it a movie. That'll be cool. It'll be like a introductionary to to the teams. It would kind of be like a mini doc. I am talking, doing like interviews, some footage, stuff like that. You guys will see. I want to be an extra somewhere. You could be an extra anywhere. All right. Cool. All right. Everybody have a good night. Enjoy the games. See you guys next week. Talk to you in a week. Yep. See ya. See you guys.